Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to use the scroll saw to cut out this bird character and paint it all nice bright colours and stick it to a backer. Now for me, as always, we've printed off our image. Now for the backer itself, I've stuck it down with painter's tape onto 5.5mm, just plywood, nice plywood from your local DIY store. And I've used carbon paper for the backer, so we literally place the carbon underneath. And I like to draw around the outer edges. Now I've deliberately gone slightly bigger. I don't know if you can see the line there. Very minimal, but we've just gone slightly bigger. I just wanted the backer to be a little bit bigger. So we've, we've drawn around it with a marker pen, a biro, should I say. And you can see from that, there's our little backer. All nicely ready. So that will be the back section. That will be the piece that we're going to stick all our other little bits to. So we can put that to one side for now. Now the actual pieces themselves, they will be cut out on 3.6 millimeter. So it's a little bit thinner, obviously. And hopefully when it's all stuck down to that backer, the 5.5, it should all fit nicely, hopefully. Now for this one, we're gonna stick this down onto painter's tape. Now you could carbon paper this exactly the same. You could pop that underneath there they should draw around all those lines. They're the sections we want to keep. We want to keep all these sections here. Some smaller pieces there. And I think for the eyes, we'll double those eyes up and put those on top of the white sections at the back. So they're bits we want to keep. So we basically want to cut out in between that line there and that line there. So do a bit of playing about with that. And then same round the wings and feathered area. Now, like I've just said, you could carbon that paper, uh, the image, should I say, just the same. But for me, on this one today, and what a lot of them do is tend to stick it down. So we will line all this backer board with painter's tape. And then we'll spray on some nice glue. I'm just about still using this one. I've had this one for a year or so in this shed. I think there's a bit, a bit left in there. And we literally can fold that over and stick it all down. And we will basically just cut over the paper itself and start cutting out each one of these sections. Okay, we'll stick all this down first. Remember, we've already done our backer, and then when we come back, we can start getting on the scroll saw and cutting it out. Right, so we've stuck that down nicely. Probably went a little bit over the top with the glue. But that doesn't matter, at least we know it's not going to go anywhere. So painter's tape, glue, stick it down. Remember, we're going to cut out around those lines. We want to keep all those bigger sections and hopefully attach them to our backer board there, which we did with carbon paper. And you notice there I've drilled a little pilot hole because we need to cut out that little middle section there. We don't need it on that because we want just want the legs on either side of it. So we'll cut that little section out and then we'll cut the full piece out obviously afterwards remember just plywood now scroll saw blades personally myself i like to use spiral blades the teeth are spiraled all the way around the blade and they will cut in any direction now you don't need it on a little project like this personally it's just what i like to use on your more cheaper saws you'll have pin blades and they have a pin at either side like so remember when your blades in the saw he wants to just get it right. He wants to feel smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. That way you know your blade's in the right way. That would work on this, no problem, because there's nothing too detailed to cut out. And the more professional guys, they use pinless blades. Believe it or not, that is a blade there. You might just get it in. There we go. And there's no pins on those, so they would have fancy clamps that clamp it top and bottom. Unfortunately, with my little old drapper that came off Noah's Ark, it takes pin blades only so i have to use these adapter adapter clamps and it's a case of putting your pinless blade in there and use a little allen key tie it up and you hook that up like you'll be hooking it to a pin uh, scroll saw should i say so if you are thinking to go out going out and purchasing a scroll saw try and get one that takes pinless blades it just takes you a lot of it's a lot easier to do than messing about with clamps and bits and bobs like that excuse me I'm just getting over a cold, so I do apologise if my voice disappears every so often. Right, so we'll set up the Olsen number 4 spiral blade. Same with these and all, smooth on the way down. 
rough on the way up and we basically just start cutting these pieces out and as we cut them out we can fit them onto here and make sure we're getting them somewhere near and remember we still have to cut that back out afterwards but i'll leave that till the end just so it's easier to move things about as we cut them out okay let's start cutting this one out right you can see from that we've cut one section out fine that was no problem i'm basically just going to leave the paper on till the end and then we'll peel it off and as i take each section off i'll just give it a little sand down with some sandpaper at the back like that and that will just keep it a bit more tidier and clearer but say so we will take the paper off right at the end now i've cut that out excuse me if i just squeeze it on here it just be a simple simple case no we're not going to get that in are we there we go just a simple case of putting it onto our backer just as a temporary thing and we can fill this in slowly as we go along so basically we'll cut each section out put it down onto our backer peel the paper off and then we'll go painting it and all the rest of it well, remember we've got to cut the backer out as well so i'll show you three or four of these pieces once you've done one cut out it's basically going to be the same process so we won't uh, bore you with too much of that but you'll get the general idea when we cut it out so we've got a nice tension, we want a nice ping ping sound. Remember, it's smooth on the way down, rough on the way up. These are spiral blades, they're not for everybody. You find a blade that you're happy with. Okay, let's just cut the rest of this out then. Right, you can see from that, we've gone all the way around. We've cut out all our little bits. And so far, everything's more or less fitting into place. So remember, we've got our little backer to cut out first. Now on this one, I did cut him an eyebrow out. That would have obviously gone on there like so. Because of the way the pattern's been designed, I just wasn't happy with a small one on that side. So I actually cut him out of the template itself so i've just cut out the eyebrows here instead of sticking them on top and i might do the same with the eyes yet depending i've cut out two separate eyes there we'll see what they're like once they're painted and stuff and if they don't look okay i just want to like, like his eyes were popping out if you know what i mean when he's all excited so i think we're just going to leave those two eyes as the only things that will stick on so the next phase now is to literally we have to cut out all the back of piece remember so what I want to do with these is I'll remove them and put a bit of pencil mark on the back. Now I do have the pattern on my phone still. So I just want to put a bit of scribble on the back. So I know that is the back of the piece. And we can remove all this. You can put numbers on there if you prefer. Originally I would have the original template and mark it A, B, C, D. And when you come to put your bits in, you obviously put them with the A, B, C, D as such. Some quite small pieces here. These little ones here, we could mark our, our left, left, left leg, right leg, obviously. These, obviously, these sections will fit in a lot easier. Okay, so we'll mark all these off, off camera. And then we'll cut this back out quickly. We'll remove the tape off it, give it a little tidy up. And then we'll be on to the painting side of things. Let's cut out this back at first.
right, we've cut it all out. We've put all our temporary bits back on again. Now it's just going to be a case of peeling all the paper off. Remember, we took the painter's tape on first, so this should come off fairly easily once you get your first bite of it. And remember, we've marked the back of them just so we know we're going on the right way. It says hopefully, I've got my fingers on there today. Here we go. <laughs> right. And what I like to do is simply just a bit of sandpaper. And I just want to take that little edge off. Just be careful with your plywood. I mean, I've sanded the back of the section down and rounded it all off. If you go too much, you will take off the top veneer. Just be a little bit careful. And that's all we need to do. And we can pop that one back on there. Remember, this is just a temporary measure. Let's do a nice big one, the breastplate there. So we'll just peel this one off quickly. And then I will basically go back and start peeling these all off. Remember, a bit of sanding. And then we can look into the painting side of things. This might just come off in the way. It peels off really easy, this painter's touch. And that's certainly a lot better than spraying the glue straight onto your wood and having trouble. peeling it all off and you can play about with this a little bit longer these are ideal projects for summertime if you sat out in the garden with a nice drink and you just want to take your time and get it all somewhere near it okay we can see from there there's some smaller sections there and as we go along we just simply just carry on and continue okay i'll continue with this and when we come back he says hopefully We'll get the paint sorted. We'll be painters touch on this one. They are nice colour, those painters touch paints. I'll show you those near the time. And that one there has come off straight away. Remember, a little bit of sanding. It doesn't need the sanding, to be honest. We've already done the back already, remember. We've done the side bits. But I just want to just round off those edges here, just so it's not as sharp as. Okay. We see from there what we're doing. So I'll do the rest. And then, like I say, we'll go and find some paints. Back in a minute. Right, there's our last piece going in. They all peeled off fine. Obviously, this will all be put on better once we glue it all down. So we've peeled all our paper off. We've got our nice little bird all sorted there, as you can see. Now it's just going to simple case of painting it all. We'll do the backer just black, so it all stands out nicely in between these separate joints. And then we we'll use painter's touch paints. Here's a great little paint for these little projects. I like these a lot. And we'll just do the rest with that. We'll decide on the colour when I go back indoors. It's a little bit warmer inside. And then we'll, uh, hopefully when we come back, we'll spray a little bit of varnish on. Even though these are gloss paints, I do like to finish with a little gloss just to finish it off. So when we come back, hopefully this will all be painted, sprayed with varnish, and this little project will be finished. Right, that's it. This project is nearly finished. Now, I glued this all down. We stuck it all in place. It's a slow process, so we had a little bit of play about with that speeded up video. And for that one, I just used uh, Lost Tight Super Glue. I think Gorilla Glue. Any any Super Glue will do for sticking that down. And you don't need a lot. It's just a case of you've got your back of your finger and a couple of little dabs like that. And then press it down and it bonds in seconds. And I mean seconds. The little leg piece there, that to me... It just wasn't right, and I literally pressed it down, and when I tried to move it, it was set solid, so you just got to be a bit careful. But it's fine, it's done the job, and you can see from that, everything's gone nicely in place. Let me put a bit of black on the back as well there. That painting's gone really happy enough with that, no problem. Now, it is a gloss paint, 
But I think because it's plywood and stuff, it's probably soaked in a little bit. There's no primer on this, and you don't add a person myself. Never bother. So I'm just going to spray it with a little bit of varnish. You knew it was coming. I tend to use varnish on all my projects. For me, it's just like the finishing one. 151 varnish today. It could be anything. I think we have something else over here. Yacht varnish. It doesn't matter. Whatever's cheapest on the day, we will use. So I'll just spray this three or four times. And then when we come back, this little project will be finished. I will get a little hanger for the back. Okay, we'll come back in a minute. Don't take long to dry this. A couple of more coats, and then we'll come back. Right, that's it. This little project is finished. Now, it looks quite blue on the camera as I'm looking at it now, but we'll take a little video outside if we get a bit of natural lighting that's left, because the main bird is actually green, but it does look quite blue on here. So, remember, it is an indoor piece because it's only plywood. So it's a little crazy little fun bird project. It's 12 inches by 10 inches across. We cut out the, the main character himself on a 3.6 millimeter plywood and the backer was 5.5 millimeter plywood. And we use an Olsen number four spiral blade to cut it all out. And then good old painter's touch paint just to finish it off with. And it didn't need it, but I do like to spray a bit of gloss on like so. And you might just be able to see the difference there from before. Just got nicer, just that nice shine on there. For me, it just makes it like a finished project, if you know what I mean. It's got a lovely shine on there, look. And that's it. This little project is finished. Thank you very much for watching.